This video is a record of the artwork that I've been displaying at the Kaiser Community Center, uh, February, March from 2018. It's work that I began back in the early 90s and uh, continued up through January of 2018. All the paintings are gouache on paper and uh, that's connected to my enamel work, cloisonne enamel work, uh, which also is on display. I titled the exhibit Out of the Blue because uh, when people ask me where my ideas come from, I often respond from out of the blue. This by no means seeks to avoid revealing my sources or curtailing discussion, but rather confesses to a multiple origin for graphic work that seeks to distill geometric form and my love of color. While nature abhors a straight line, I, by contrast, like hard edge definitions. On the other hand, I seek to be in tune with the asymmetrical shapes of nature. So it all comes from out of the blue. Blue also happens to be my favorite color, often tinted with gray because reality is sobering. If discovery favors the prepared mind, creativity favors the prepared eye. So I tried to look around, check reality, take an inventory of internal and external stimuli and go to work, first on the pages of a sketchbook and then on paper or on metal. Themes jump out, the images sent back to Earth by the Hubble Space Telescope, the dancing forms of tree branches bent by a strong southwest wind that I can view from my upper deck, the idea of angel sentinels watching over us. My West Salem neighborhood, experienced on daily walks up and down the hills, looking at homes and people. The force of gravity pulling circles downward, skewing my sense of balance and harmony. I see no division between the secular and the sacred, between the human and the divine both interpenetrating each other to make the present now take on deeper dimensions. I try to remember art history and acknowledge creative influences. Botticelli, Dürer, Cronach, Picasso, Matisse, Dix, Davis, Sean, Diebenkorn, and the freedom of my grandchildren's innocent and joyful experiments with pigments and paper and water. Years ago, in the late 80s and early 90s at the Oregon School of Arts and Crafts, I picked up some skill in the metal studio, which later was enhanced with color through the discovery of cloisonne enameling. Working on a small scale, making jewelry, intersected nicely with larger painted images helping me to move back and forth between two different media in two different scales and sizes. Long ago, I discovered a strong impulse to simply make things, and I've been nurturing that impulse ever since. The oldest painting in the exhibit hails from 1992, while the latest simply happened last week. Let's go on a tour. This painting is titled In the Davis Loop. Uh, it's uh, one of the earliest paintings in the exhibit from 1992. Uh, Stuart Davis was one of my favorite uh, paintings, painters. Uh, he's an abstract uh, painter. Uh, he was called the American Cubist. And in his paintings, he has uh, plays with lines that get thin and fat and twist and turn. And so these lines that are in the painting uh, remind me of Stuart Davis, and that's why the title is In the Davis Loop. My forms are rather surrealistic. Uh, his were a little bit more concrete, but uh, it's a celebration of his love of color and, and shape. The uh, title I've given to this painting is Camouflaged Cross. 
Uh, it was part of about a dozen paintings that I did with various cross shapes and then superimposed on that are some surrealistic uh, kind of images that float and uh, camouflage the cross. We, we live at a time when there is a lot of anti-Christian sentiment in the culture. And I think that uh, the cross sort of functions as a fifth column, uh, uh, a, a presence and yet uh, a quiet presence that uh, reminds Christians to interact with the culture as servants. And so uh, there's a lot going on, but the cross is the background for all of the activity in the foreground. The most recent painting in the exhibit is Out of the Blue. It gives the title to the whole exhibit. Uh, it was uh, finished in uh, the last part of January, right before the exhibit was mounted. Uh, there's some autobiographical stuff going on in this painting. Uh, this, the, the abstract heart at the bottom of the painting has these hooks that want to kind of tear it apart. Um, and yet uh, up above there's this form that's kind of breaking free, uh, experiencing joy and, and new life. The hooks are still there, but they don't inhibit uh, this expansive uh, feeling of, of freedom. These next four small paintings uh, were designed to highlight the themes for the four Sundays before Christmas in the season of Advent. Uh, each one is, uh, derives its design and meaning from the uh, prescribed scripture lessons for that Sunday. The first Sunday in Advent uh, is more apocalyptic. It talks about the coming of the Messiah at the end of time, coming on the clouds is the title of the painting. The second Sunday in Advent uh, highlights the work of John the Baptist. And uh, the theme and the title for the painting is Prepare the Way. Uh, John is the forerunner of Jesus, whose birth we celebrate at Christmas. The primary colors used in these four seasons, uh, blue, red, green, and yellow, um, uh, highlight the division of the color wheel that artists work with. And again, uh, gives uh, the idea of uh, the, the way, the, 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 the red being, uh, fire and turmoil that John the Baptist and uh, Jesus later on encounters. Uh, blue is the, the color of the sky. It's the uh, idea of the, the clouds and the great beyond. The uh, green themed third Sunday in Advent uh, has to do with rejoicing, the, the joy that uh, we find anticipating Christmas and the birth of Christ. And the fourth painting, uh, primarily drawing on a, uh, the yellow uh, hues, uh, highlights the visit that Mary makes to her cousin Elizabeth, uh, both women being pregnant, Mary with Jesus and Elizabeth with John the Baptist. And so in this last painting, there are references to the fetuses in the wombs of Mary and Elizabeth. Uh, as they both encounter each other and uh, recognize that uh, their sons are uh, gifts of God and also uh, have import for the faith of people that follow uh, many centuries later. These two paintings uh, give the theme uh, abstract geometric, which is really uh, my style of painting. Uh, using geometric forms in abstract patterns. Each form carries, carries some meaning. I obviously love circles, and uh, circles are kind of balls that, that roll. Uh, and when the circle is on the edge of a plane, uh, it references uh, gravity, and you want to see uh, in the circles a certain amount of motion. Uh, the colors and forms are 
uh, hopefully balanced in an asymmetrical way uh, so that uh, not only do you see a flat surface, but that you see some depth uh, in terms of the hues and uh, the light dark uh, contrast. So the forms move up and down, the circles roll, and uh, abstract geometric is the uh, form that uh, I love and uh, see life portrayed in these forms and colors. In the Sunday morning Christian liturgy, uh, there is a phrase as we anticipate uh, coming to the Eucharist uh, that the, the pastor says, lift up your hearts. And so that's the title for these two paintings. Uh, the idea of joy that uh, is exuberant and all over the place as uh, we anticipate the uh, central truth of Christian worship that uh, Christ comes and dwells within us. And so there, there is joy, there's some little crosses, there, there's forms breaking out all over. Uh, there are uh, three sections here, two yellow and one gray is the background color. And in front of that, all sorts of things are happening. You can see a multitude of people that are expressing their, their joy and their celebration. Um, this painting on this side uh, has four sections. Uh, two are gray, two are blue. And again, the same thing is happening. There are a lot of abstract forms. They're all moving about. Uh, there is some balance and direction if you look closely enough. Uh, but again, it's the exuberance of joy that uh, I was trying to express in these two paintings that connect to the Christian liturgy. I live in West Salem, uh, which is a very hilly community from the Willamette River up uh, to uh, a high point from which you can see Mount Hood and Mount St. Helens and uh, on the other side, uh, Mount Jefferson. And so I tried to get out and walk in the neighborhood up and down the hills, looking at homes and people and things that I encounter. And so I call this painting the Daily Walk. Uh, there are a mixture of forms. Uh, you can travel through the painting, uh, let your eye follow the various forms that uh, jump out at you and uh, kind of uh, go with me on my daily walk. The title of these two paintings is Harmonic Balance One and Two. They, they seek to uh, provide balance of forms asymmetrically. Uh, if you take a look at how the forms function in one part of the painting and how they are uh, offset in another part, uh, hopefully there's a balance of form as well as a balance of color. You pick a color and see how it uh, shows up in the rest of the painting and uh, hopefully the overall uh, impression is one of balance and harmony uh, in an asymmetrical abstract manner. Uh, I was attending a conference once where the speaker says, uh, you can't have both harmony and balance at the same time. You've got to pick one or the other in terms of your life. And I thought about that and uh, it's a challenge. Uh, how do you portray both harmony and balance at the same time? The balance of form and the harmony of color. And hopefully uh, there is a sense of uh, visual piece that comes from taking a look at these two paintings. The Hubble Meditation series began in the late 90s uh, when I was mesmerized, as most people are, by the photographs sent back to Earth by the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, I'm not trying to replicate those photographs except to use them as a way of uh, thinking about the expanse of the universe and our place in it. And so the black forms uh, kind of establish the, uh, the present uh, viewer's position as we look through them uh, into the expanding universe. And again, the, the circles uh, in these paintings, I'm using a lot of watercolor together with the, the black forms in gouache and uh, uh, looking at the, the sacred nature of the, the universe 
and uh, the mystery that it contains uh, and the humility that it should induce in us as we find our place in this uh, creative uh, act of God. Again, the, the colors of the, the heavens uh, and the, the, the black forms uh, are kind of like an iconostasis in an uh, Eastern uh, Orthodox church that establish the, the presence uh, in the nave of the church looking into the chancel area uh, in the most holy section which is out there in the expanding universe. Someone has said that uh, this form looks like a stomach. Uh, and in a sense, there is a lot of things churning out there in the, in the universe in terms of black holes and, and the movement of galaxies. And uh, just now we're coming to see uh, some of the earliest parts of the universe whose light has finally gotten to us. Uh, through all of these uh, millions uh, of light years. Uh, and, and again, uh, time is part of this vast expanse of uh, the universe and things churn in this stomach. It, uh, uh, they're becoming new forms uh, just as we live uh, here on earth. We are earthbound creatures and yet we're part of this uh, huge universe that uh, still expands and still uh, fascinates and interests us. There was a time when I didn't have enough money to buy frames, uh, so I decided I would uh, take scrap lumber out in my workshop and uh, build some frames and then just uh, glue the paintings onto the background. And I had to get this uh, prepared uh, in a hurry for an Easter uh, exhibit at a church. And so these uh, sculpted frames and paintings uh, have to do with the Easter theme. Uh, I title this one, uh, Sprout. Uh, it's a reference to Jesus' uh, passage uh, where he says, uh, unless a seed falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. Uh, but if it dies, it uh, sprouts and brings forth uh, much fruit. And so there's this upward movement uh, suggesting the direction of resurrection. And uh, this uh, circular panel uh, is titled Go Up Higher. There's a form in here that uh, relates to a resurrection image, uh, but uh, the uh, structure around it indicates that the resurrection happens within a historical context. Uh, it's not just a mystical kind of illusion, uh, but there's a lot of concrete stuff going on on the ground, like the Rolling Stone. Uh, there's a movement from uh, left to right, uh, rolling the stone away and uh, freeing up uh, the grave. Jesus is uh, uh, busting out of a cemetery and uh, giving us eternal hope. Intersecting Realities is the title for this painting, uh, which is part of this Easter exhibit. Um, there are basically three circles uh, indicated in this painting, two yellow and then one very diffuse. Uh, I see the theme of uh, resurrection as dealing with uh, the issues of space and time and then uh, rising above that. And so the, the new reality of uh, resurrection uh, impinges upon space and time and sort of negates that uh, in terms of a larger reality. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm dealing with in this, this painting. Um, it doesn't necessarily uh, communicate that on the surface, but uh, looking at it uh, for some time, um, there is a new reality here. Uh, Jesus in the resurrection is no longer bound by space and time. I gave the title Along the Conundrum to this uh, uh, painting and uh, framed sculpture. Uh, life is a conundrum. You don't know always what's going on and why. 
uh, but you walk it. You, it's a horizontal e experience from uh, past into the future. Uh, and you uh, notice uh, how time and uh, the aging process catches up to you. Uh, so I put a piece of driftwood from the Oregon coast into this, uh, into this white frame, uh, indicating that as you walk along uh, the sands of time, uh, you pick up uh, elements that uh, lived and, and died and uh, are now repurposed uh, in, a, in a painting. The title for this uh, painting and uh, framed is uh, The Message. Uh, I look at this as uh, the angel getting, uh, getting the message. I want you to go down and guard that tomb, roll away the stone and sit uh, on the place where the body of Christ once lay. I call this the procession. It was actually the first uh, combination of uh, wood framed, sculpted frame and, and painting. There, I was working on making a processional cross for a church at the same time, and so I put a processional cross in the painting and call it the procession. I like to combine a lot of different uh, materials when I do, do my work. So there's painted wood, there's aluminum, uh, rods and uh, cloisonne enamel uh, triangle here with uh, abstract design in it. Uh, cloiss the cloisonne uh, is a French term. Uh, your cloisons are these little silver wires that divide, that separate the color. And uh, uh, the process of enamel, it's glass on metal. The metal is copper and uh, these colors are uh, fused in a kiln, and it's an involved process. Uh, so the com combination of the glass on metal with aluminum and painted wood, uh, it's kind of fascinating to me always to mix these elements into one art piece. I inherited a whole batch of silver-plated serving trays from my mother-in-law uh, at her garage sale. And uh, these sat around for many years. Uh, I polished one up and I decided I would put some cloisonne enamel pieces on top of it and fuse together these uh, two materials. Uh, the title of this is Très Bien. Uh, a bit humorous, play on uh, the French word for it is beautiful. Uh, in the center, there is a, my takeoff on a, a nude painted by Henri Matisse. Uh, it's set on a tripod. Uh, I call it uh, the nude with two left elbows. Um, and uh, there are two abstract male figures here looking at the nude painting. Uh, it's Trebien. And finally, uh, this silver-plated uh, serving dish uh, reminded me of a seashell, and the seashell reminded me of Botticelli's painting, The Birth of Venus, who arrives on the seashore riding on a seashell. Uh, and so the figure is uh, my adaptation of Botticelli's Venus uh, with the background in cloisonne enamel. Uh, on this silver-plated serving dish. Venus is quite a dish. One of the problems with uh, painting with gouache is that uh, you have to glaze it so that uh, water does not touch the painting, which could destroy the, the work. Uh, and so with uh, this good north light that we're getting here in the gallery, uh, we get reflection on the, the paintings, which makes uh, photography a bit difficult. Uh, if you notice cars passing by on the street, uh, again, this solid painting uh, becomes a moving picture. Uh, these next three paintings are uh, titled Playground, and it was a, a reaction to the playground that my wife uh, developed in conjunction with her preschool. I often uh, watched uh, kids running around on slides and swings and having a lot of fun uh, in the playground, on the playground. 
And so these paintings are uh, a reflection of that uh, preschool playground. This uh, title of this painting is From Top to Bottom, where these curve curving forms go from the top of the painting down, down lower. Uh, it's just a play on geometric form and color. In this second painting, the movement goes from side to side, left to right, right to left. Uh, it's a study in color and form. Uh, there should be some action going on here, uh, probably also the reflection uh, onto the street outside. This is uh, part of the Harmonic Balance series. I did about 12 of these paintings. Uh, it's from 2008. Uh, again, just uh, trying to balance the, the shapes uh, in an asymmetrical way, uh, and also the harmony of color uh, in a balanced way. When I'm working with an idea in sketchbook and then later on transferred to a painting, I'm not always sure just what I'm doing and what it all means. And this painting was uh, one of those, I call it Storm Stopper. Uh, I painted it early on right after my wife died and I connect what's going on in the painting to uh, Jesus walking on the water and telling the storm to cease the winds and the waves. And uh, I implored the winds and the waves of grief to stop blowing and flowing. They didn't right away, but this is uh, autobiographically embedded in this painting. Karyatids are forms, oftentimes uh, referencing the human body forms that hold up buildings. Uh, and so these are architectural forms that I've abstracted. Uh, and uh, hopefully they're strong enough to uphold uh, something of a heavier nature. Some time ago, I did a series of paintings that were uh, studies for to be placed in a larger altarpiece. Um, I called it altered pieces, uh, thinking that uh, too often uh, Christian art is locked into sort of a, a memory uh, of the Renaissance and, and locked into uh, this, this, this memory in, instead of uh, trying to find a modern style that would communicate uh, the Christian message. And so this is titled Gethsemane, uh, the story of Jesus in the garden. The figure of Christ is prone here at the bottom. Uh, the disciples are sleeping up here and Judas with his money bag uh, comes uh, walking into the garden ready to betray Jesus. And so uh, again, I tried to pick up uh, some of the, the tension and that is embedded in this story in a uh, suggesting uh, this as a study for a larger piece in an altered piece. Again, trying to find a modernist style uh, that picks up on biblical narrative uh, this is titled, Strike the Shepherd. Uh, it's a reflection of that passage uh, where the opponents of Jesus uh, say, uh, if we strike the shepherd, then the sheep will be scattered. And so you have the shepherd's uh, staff, uh, the head of Christ being, if you sever the head, then the body is also dead. And the sheep here at the bottom are scattering. And again, it's an attempt to show the, the, the tension uh, and the, the power behind the narrative uh, that talks about the uh, ultimate death of Jesus. I think of angels as sentinels standing watch. And so this is an abstracted form uh, suggesting a sentinel uh, watching over us. This is another example of putting cloisonne enamel uh, on a silver tray. The piece is, is about as big as I can handle in my kiln. Uh, each piece gets fired six, seven, eight times. 
uh, in this whole process of taking the fine uh, grains of glass and uh, putting them in the kiln where they fuse, uh, separated by the cloisons, the, the fine silver wire. Uh, the design is uh, similar to my paintings. Uh, it's abstract geometric. Again, trying to balance uh, forms asymmetrically with uh, a balance and harmony of color. Uh, it's really handy for me to move from one medium into another when uh, you kind of get to the end of what you're doing and maybe a little bit bored with the process uh, to move from painting into enamel work and enamel work back into painting. And of course, the enamel work uh, is translatable to uh, jewelry and much smaller pieces than the paintings are. The design of pectoral crosses gives me an opportunity to deal with the, the various themes of uh, the cross. I find that uh, embedded in the horizontal and vertical lines that intersect, uh, you have a paradox of meanings. Uh, this is one of darkness as well as enlightenment. It's uh, pain as well as joy. It's uh, the death as well as life. And so embedded in the cross is this, this deep paradox of meaning, uh, as well as the interaction of God with the death of his son. There is a divine presence always in the darkness and depth and pain of the cross. And so this is a bit of a mystery, how uh, God can redeem the world through the death of his son. God will have the last word and that word is life. So there is embedded in the cross a, an element of, of joy as well as sorrow, of peace as well as trauma. Uh, and I hope to convey those meanings uh, in the designs of my pectoral crosses. The title of this enamel piece is New Face in Town. It's a takeoff on a design by Pablo Picasso uh, when he was uh, working with the uh, face of a woman. Uh, it was at the same time that he was designing the Chicago Picasso, uh, this grand sculpture that is placed in the uh, city square of the city of Chicago. Uh, it is, uh, uh, provides some depth uh, and, and sculptural uh, characteristics by having a number of different surfaces uh, that are arranged on uh, uh, wood, wood legs. <laughs> 